Welcome everyone, both in person and online, uh, to the current monthly installment of the EFF Austin Meetup. Uh, know a lot of you, um, a few of you are new, welcome all. Um, so for those of you who are new, my name is Kevin Welch, I'm the current president of the board at EFF Austin. If you're like, what's EFF Austin? Well, um, we are a long-standing Austin-based digital civil liberties organization. We've been around over 30 years at this point. We are closely affiliated. I was not there 30 years ago, by the way. We are closely affiliated with Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, which is based out of San Francisco and was founded around the same time as us. If you've never heard of Electronic Frontier Foundation or EFF, they're the nation's oldest and largest digital civil liberties advocacy group. You can sort of think of them as the ACLU for the internet and emerging technologies. They try to make sure your rights are protected in emerging technological spaces, especially your First and Fourth Amendment rights to free speech and right to avoid unreasonable search and seizure slash privacy. Um, EFF advocates on a wide variety of tech policy issues that frequently make the news. You've probably heard something about in passing. Um, they're defenders of net neutrality. They support end-to-end -end encryption against government and corporate surveillance. Um, they defend Section 230 of the CDA, which basically is what allows all of us to post on platforms and those platforms not be sued out of existence so we all have a place to share and talk. Basically doing a bunch of good stuff. Um, so yeah, that, they are the real heroes, uh, working every month, but we are one of many affiliate groups around the country that are part of a loose alliance known as the Electronic Frontier Alliance, or the EFA. If you are not based in Austin, but somewhere else in the U.S., there is a good chance that there is one near you. There are about a hundred such groups all around the United States. Although, interestingly, last I checked, EFF Austin is not only the only one in Austin, we are the only one in Texas. So, uh, a lot of ground to cover. Um, we are also the oldest member of the EFA. I believe the next oldest member is EF Georgia, which has been around since 1996. Um, yeah, so we don't do anywhere near as much as EFF does. We are a much leaner, smaller organization, uh, primarily driven by the intelligence and passions of our volunteers. Um, though, of course, you are always welcome to donate on our website. There is a PayPal link at EFFAustin.org if you want to support our efforts. Um, yeah, but the main thing we do is educational. We hold monthly meetups here at Capital Factory, currently second Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m., attendable both in person and online via our live stream, which Cat Factory graciously provides. Um, we also have been really trying to up our AV game recently, thanks to uh, one of our supporters who I won't name because, hey, we're about privacy. I'd want to get his permission first. But um, we're really trying to up that and get some better videos that we're posting on our own YouTube channel. So if you missed the live stream, you can check those at a later date. Um, so yeah, um, as far as the monthly meetups, we're always looking for speakers. If you or someone you know might make an interesting speaker on the topics in our wheelhouse, we'd love to hear from them. Basically anything to do with the intersection of tech, law, society, futurism, digital art, you know, it's all fair game. So if you know somebody who knows good stuff in that arena or doing interesting stuff in that arena, throw them at us. Um, we're going to have our, um, our friend lawyer Shane, I'm blanking on his last name, but he's going to be our speaker next month. It's going to be a very relevant topic because he's basically going to be, as I mentioned a bit earlier, Section 230 of the CDA, which is a little law that helps uh, websites like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube host all of our content. This law is very much under attack right now from multiple legal avenues, including there are actually several bonkers laws here in Texas right now that are doing crazy things with the way speech works online. And so Shane um, is actually pretty knowledgeable about the litigation space of, um, of uh, speech on various platforms online. That's one of his specialties as a lawyer. So we're going to just be having a discussion about two, Section 230, um, what these pending um, you know, lawsuits that may eventually end up at the Supreme Court are going to do to potentially affect that landscape, and a way to balance uh, you know, the weird place we find ourselves in historically where we have these large private platforms that are quasi-functioning as digital public squares and there's not a lot of competition. And it's a complicated question because whether they should be public or private, there's pros and cons on either side. So if you want to really nerd out about how we can have the best free speech ecosystem online, I encourage coming to next month. 
Um, I will turn things over to our speaker in just a sec. I've mostly gone through the business I need to go through. Um, oh, I will also, as I said, we mostly are educational. We've also been occasionally known to throw fun cyberpunk parties, though there's not been one of those in a long time, thanks to COVID and other things. Maybe there will be again someday. We often have a very fun guest like famed blogger and sci-fi author Cory Doctorow in attendance when he is available. Um, but the other thing we sometimes do is, like our big uh, brother or sister EFF, or however they identify, um, we sometimes get involved in activism um, at the local and state level. Most recently, we were part of a coalition here in Austin that was trying to uh, defeat our city council bringing back uh, ALPRs with our police department. If you've never heard of them, those are automated license plate readers, a technology that Proponents say it can combat crime, but we at EFF and EFF Austin feel as a tool of mass surveillance without warrants. So we were part of a coalition that tried to stop them. We were not successful, although we did win that it's only going to be a one-year pilot program that will sunset unless City Council reauthorizes it. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is to just let everybody know that we have not stopped advocating on this issue. Our current plan that is in its infancy is we hope to eventually bring a ballot petition before the citizens of Austin to put the vote directly to the citizens of if this technology should be banned or not. So two things we could use help with. People who are experts in crafting ballot petition language, lawyers or activists, or people who might know uh, fairly wealthy tech types in this town who might want to fund the signature drive effort. So if you know of any leads, uh, let us know. We have several of our own leads and are in early conversations. I will not mention any names since everything is preliminary. But um, yeah, if you can help in any way on that fight, get with us. Um, Kevin.Welch at EFFAustin.org. All right, that's everything we're working on right now. So without further ado, I will intro and turn over to our speaker. Normally, for our speaker, I often have to re very much reference the notes they gave me over their bio when I introduce them, but I happen to know our speaker this month very well and have known him for many years, so I think I can just intro him without um, uh, needing to reference my notes. Um, so um, our speaker this month is my friend Mike Michaels. Um, so Mike, uh, he to me, despite not originally being from Austin, he's a person who really points aside he, to me, has the essence of kind of keep Austin weird in his soul. He's always doing interesting, truly unique projects that nobody else in town is doing and that I didn't even know anybody would think of. I remember when I first met him, he was running events called Slackathons, which were basically athlons for the rest of us, uh, where they were as hilariously anti-competitive and were mostly excuses to go around doing fun austin activities. Um, so yeah, I play with him in a band. Um, he's for many years uh, published a local events calendar here in Austin that you may have seen in HEB. Um, yeah, he's, he's got his fingers all over. He, if you wanna know like what's cool in this city, this man knows. I, I highly recommend his list of the 100 and more weirdest things in Austin on his blog. As a longtime native, I think, he gets it in a way those touristy lists do not get it. Um, so yeah. Mike, a few years ago, started working on a new project that when I first learned about it kind of blew my mind. It is what he has dubbed the Eureka Room. Um, the Eureka Room for many years lived in Mike's house. It now has a more commercial space such that more people can experience it. But I'm not really going to tell you anything about what the Eureka Room is beyond saying that to me, as I was kind of saying just a minute ago, you may be like, well, why are we profiling this? Well, you know, digital art is one thing we do like to highlight because it is part of the electronic frontier. But also, you know, frankly, I think what Mike's done with this project is incredibly in the spirit of cyberpunk, which is one of EFF and EFF Austin's founding ethoses, which is ordinary people claiming technology for themselves and finding interesting novel uses for it. And really, you know, the way I would put it is, you know, you've heard of escape rooms, but to me, the Eureka Room is a far more interesting, truly novel concept. But the only reason it's not obvious it's cyberpunk is because it's joyful instead of dystopian. And without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Mike to tell you exactly what the Eureka Room is, how he built it, and why. All right. Oh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, very nice to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody online. Uh, this will be somewhat casual, I have a lot of notes uh, that are somewhat ordered, probably uh, over 
a number of topics. So if you want to just stop and ask me a question, please feel free to do that. Uh, Kevin, can people ask questions online as well? Yes, they certainly. Yeah, anybody online, just type your questions for Mike in the chat, and I will forward them to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about me, my background, and then. Uh, the Eureka Room, and then some of the things I hope to see in the future for Eureka Room type stuff. Uh, so this is the Eureka Room. I, uh, I guess I first want to say, if you, I know one of you have been to the Eureka Room. Uh, it's kind of about the surprises, so I'm not going to give too many spoilers about the content. Um, just enough to make you understand what it is. Uh, I'm going to more focus on the technology and the uh, uh, the just where, how it came about and where I wanted to go, so. Um, let's see, I'm, not, I'm using my Google Photos here, so I'm not sure what's next. I can only see what is happening at the time. So, about me, Alice Obscura, if you've ever been to this website, it's a bunch of weird stuff. I'm really into weird stuff. I moved to Austin in 99, I was in software for a while. All my vacations are around uh, things that you can find that was obscure uh, at the uh, uh, let me just back up one bit and say one more word about the Eureka Room. So the website says it's the Eureka Room is is a fun and absurd participatory experience for friends and strangers. Visitors engage with curious and playful programming within a one of a kind hundred square foot room filled with light and sound. So uh, it's best enjoyed if you don't know anything about it. I'll tell you a little bit more in a minute. So one of the places I've been to is this place, which it looks a lot like it might be Holland, but it's actually in Japan. Uh, years ago, there was an article in Wired magazine about a hotel that was run by robots. It made its rounds on the internet, and I wanted to go. The article was mainly about the hotel and the robots, and as a footnote, it mentioned that it was a part of this park that in 99 was built to look like parts of Holland. And it's amazing. These are like real brick buildings. And the story is it didn't stay in business very long. And then someone went, bought it to make it a very high tech theme park. You can see here, it's, it's huge. It's just massive. It's like a small city. So when they made it high tech, they, uh, they took the windmills and the tulips and they put LEDs over everything. You can see the, the white strips there are all LEDs. They put LEDs in the canals. There's just LEDs everywhere. Hopefully this video will run. Let's see if I can get this to go. They have this huge tower. It looks like it's water, but it's all LEDs. It's just like this most insane place I've ever been in my life. Uh, and so this is the sort of places I, I seek out. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a while. Uh, like Kevin mentioned, I make this uh, Austin events wall calendar, shows you things to do. I've been making that for 16 years. It's, I sell an HEB in Costco. I really like events and things that are going on. Uh, I, uh, so part of my interest in events and activities made me interested in creating my own experience. I've had the Eureka Room idea for over 10 years. Um, I'm going to try to cut back on the history of it a lot. There's a lot of twists and turns. Um, there's more about the calendar. Uh, but I've also done other events like the Austin Stationary 5K, which where pe the people who run stand and people who hold the signs are running to make it look like the people who are standing are running, if that makes sense. Um, there they are right there. They made some signs. And there's and I have another event called I Got a Bag of Wigs, Let's Wear Them, where we went down to uh, Town Lake and uh, convinced people who were running to wear wigs. Uh, an Austin Messy Homes tour. Uh, it was an online thing during COVID. Uh, Slack Athlon, as Kevin mentioned. I made this giant cornhole board. Uh, it's for sale. If anybody wants a giant cornhole board, please let me know. <laughs> I, I'm way done with it. Um, there's somebody playing it. Can see that? Yeah. Um, so that gives you an idea of like, kind of stuff I'm into. Uh, so I decided I had all these different ideas. I wanted to put them in one room. 
for people who have different experiences. I have a huge list of ideas. So I started just building out a room in my, my uh, what was my music room. I had no idea how to frame. You can see it's terribly framed. Uh, I thought I'd use black plastic for the walls. Um, here's it going in. This is what it ended up looking like. Kevin, I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, original Eureka Room. It, this is more the dystopian uh, uh, feel that you had I'm mentioned earlier. It looks like a murder box. Yeah, uh, so this, this was not good. Also, the, the projector was inside it and it lit up the room. It was just not the vibe I wanted. So I, it kind of died a, a death. There's, there's where you sat before you were murdered. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was a little discouraging. A couple years later, I, I said, okay, I'm going to build it differently. We're going to get these, build this wall with this whiteboard. I'm going to have a rear projector, you can see there the screen, and it would be something like just the screen with some ambient light like this. So I bought these ambient lights, the TV's just to stand in, just to see how, what it might be like. Uh, these pictures make it look way better than it actually is. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it was really lame, it was, more like, it was more like this. And I didn't really like it. I had uh, this other project, this magic table that uh, Mickey Delp had uh, bought, who I think is what, who had made, who I think is watching. I mean, somebody called Electronics is watching. So yeah, so that's probably way. him. Uh, it did look way cooler than the lights, so I said, okay, it's made out of LEDs, let's put some LEDs on the wall. Uh, so, started putting LEDs on the wall, contacted an engineer who I found, I think through Mickey, actually, and we just got really excited and decided to buy a whole bunch of LEDs. Uh, and put them all over the walls. So you can see here, each one of those is a strip of LEDs. Uh, now on top of the fact that there's a lot of LEDs, when we ordered them, we ordered them as uh, 30s, which is 30 per meter, I believe. Uh, but they came as 60, so we had double LEDs we wanted. We had like, ended up with like 10,000 LEDs. Uh, you can see here, we're hanging them up. Uh, we had to find, the, I had to go through all a bunch of acrylic, there's so much choice of acrylic, I wanted to get the uh, hot spots to be, to not show and to have it as, uh, have it as high res as possible. Um, so I wanted to, so we tested out a bunch of stuff. You can see here, that one of the earlier uh, videos of it. So it was two panels, it was, it was like two four by eight panels. Uh, the, this is the projector screen, which, sorry, it's a little blurry, but uh, it's clear acrylic and some screen, rear projection screen that I, I found online. And uh, to, uh, it is just amazing, like everything we needed, we could just find or find something like, it was just, I was just so blown away by how much stuff is out there and how many people are making stuff uh, and, and how affordable it is, uh, relatively speaking. So this is the, I went through many projectors. I would buy them from Amazon and I would return them when they didn't work uh, for my needs. Uh, after a while, Amazon called me and said, what are you doing? Why do you keep returning all these expensive projectors? They enough, they asked. They, 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 yeah, so I was like. I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, I was like, they emailed me. I don't know if they called me. They probably emailed me, but they were like, what's going on? Why, what, what's your scam? And I'm like, I just, I don't know how to test the projector just looking online, right? So. Uh, so I did eventually find one. Just a, a note for anybody who's buying a projector. I have this thing called, uh, uh, it's called the rainbow effect. Some people, when they look at projection screens and they move their eyes a little bit, they get this really annoying RGB color. Uh, Epson seems to be the only people who make a projector that does not create this annoying feature. Uh, so if you have a friend that's like watching project screen, like what is that? What? And everybody's like, everybody thought it was crazy for the longest time, and I finally Googled it, and it's a thing. Um, so Epson's the way to go, in my opinion. Um, I had to get the projector had to get farther back from the screen than was really possible, so I had to take this plug and go buy a different plug online, so it could just go straight down instead of being like that. Even that wasn't enough, so I had to actually drill out the projector to just get every inch because um, the room I was in was not big enough. Uh, also, the, the closet it was not in was not big enough, so I had to cut the wall down. Um, I think that beam was important, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I cut it down. I taped it up. Um, I'm not. I'm kind of a. I'm not the ideal maker 
for anyone who knows me, I don't really measure stuff. So did all that, and then um, that's my support. But uh, so then the projector doesn't uh, quite clear the, the cut. So I had so I had to cut it again, uh, and then which meant I had to cover up all the electronics and clean it up. Uh, actually, I don't think I showed it on here, but I had to do it three times. It was that that terrible. I never. Uh, learn apparently, but uh, luckily I have awesome maker friends that help me out. I'm just the guy that forces things to happen. Um, so you can see it's starting to take shape here. This is just some image from the internet. There's another one. Uh, so here's, here's a shot of one of the earlier shots of just some YouTube video stars I got and some uh, generative art on the LEDs. Uh, we had this, we were fortunate that it was kind of reflective. So the stars aren't really on the wall, it's just that the acrylics reflecting and uh, yeah and so I ended up just kind of using that as part of the uh, in some of the programs just taking advantage of that 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 uh, bug which is kind of a feature so so here's a little bit of the behind the scenes uh, I can talk some what to this uh, Mickey helped me a lot I had some other help from a guy named Noah White uh, Let's see, I'll get back to Touch Designer. So it all, basically all runs off the of PC in this program called Touch Designer, which um, I'll jump into in a minute. Uh, and this is just, right here is the mapping of each LED strip. There's just, every LED is mapped, all 10,000 of them. Uh, goes into the PC. Um, actually, let me go ahead and jump over there. So this is Touch Designer. Oh, God, that worked. Um, what we have here, if you can see my mouse, would it be better for me to stand in front of it and point, or? I mean, you'll still be in view, this whole area is in view. Okay, so basically, I have four different programs here. This is, this is kind of just some dummy uh, uh, graphics. Uh, and we choose the program, and it outputs to here. Then it goes into another section of the program. Where it starts up over here, we take it, we take it here, it actually goes here too. But it goes from here, we split up the left side. Now let me back up and say the whole thing is one video that wraps around three walls. So I cut off one third and put it on the left wall, I cut off another third and put it on the right wall, and I cut off the middle and put it on the projector. Then it goes to this whole network, which I'm happy to go into more detail with you all if you, have, if you want me to. Uh, here's where it gets mapped to the LEDs. Then it throws it out to uh, the Ethernet port right here on the PC and it goes back. That's running the projector and the LED? Yeah, so, yeah, good question. Yeah, so, please stop me because I'm so, kind of. So you, the control bus is an Ethernet cable. So this is, yeah, this is the LEDs. The, uh, the monitor I use to just see what's going on, it goes here, this, or maybe it goes there. And then there's a USB that goes out to the projector. Okay, so the USB goes to the projector. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, HDMI goes to the projector. HDMI. HDMI to the projector, Ethernet to the LEDs. There's another. And touch design that controls all. Touch design controls all of it. I'll show you in a minute, I have a waiting room now that has a TV in it, and there's another. Uh, this guy uh, goes out to the uh, TV. So Touch Designer controls the waiting room, and Touch Designer is just amazing software. And it's, it's really cheap. It's basically free to use unless you want to do commercial kind of stuff with it, and then it's still really affordable. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so from that, this it's really 10,000, or was that a? Really, yeah, it's like 10,000 some odd. Yeah, now it's, now it's over 20,000 because I've made it even bigger, which I'll show you. Um, so this is still the home version. Uh, Before we move on, yes. what, uh, the, how powerful a computer do you need to drive 20,000 LEDs? You know, I don't remember the specs. I don't think it's super powerful. Um, at, the, at the time, it was like about a $1,200 PC, so it's not like okay. a, it's not a monster. Not, this is not no. running VR or high end gaming. No. In fact, the whole thing, runs out of like two plugs. Like the projector's in one and the PC and all the LEDs are like in another. And well, basically it's, it, which I think may even be on the same circuit. So it's pretty, 
pretty low power. Um, all the LEDs run at five volts. Um, Yes, there's many, many wires. Like, and when we moved it, it was like such a nightmare because, uh, like, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I'm not the best maker. I'm also not the best labeler. So we, some of the wires were not labeled well or tightly. It cost me many hours. Um, so here's here's the boards where the Ethernet cable goes into these boards. These boards split up all the, all basically all the the data to the LEDs. Uh, they also uh, that, yeah, that's all I'll say on that. And the, because um, the power is separate. Wish Mickey was here, but the power is like a whole separate thing. Here's one of the power, uh, power supplies. The power set LED, we had some fuse blocks. Um, so this is actually from the, the newer version, but they're essentially the same. Uh, so it kind of looks like this on the back. Um, this is, is this the new version? Yes. I've done, I didn't know anything about this stuff, but I feel like I helped a lot. I feel like I could build it from scratch now. I, uh, lots of wires. This is my, okay, so there's in the old place. So, okay, so here's what it ended up looking like in my house, finally. Uh, let me remind you what it used to look like. So <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a much better uh, scenario. Uh, what well, depends on your taste, I guess, but murder volcano, <laughs> murder, vol murder volcano, <laughs> Turkey yes. is displeased. Yeah, um, such a good game. Yes, such a good game. Uh, I do show kids here. I actually stopped having kids just because it's not super indestructible. Um, these kids were fine, but uh, I, I'll get more into the philosophy about it. So then uh, this happened. Uh, also, Mickey says you're doing great, FYI. Oh, okay. So apparently, Thank you're explaining yes, correctly I have how not. it works. Yes, and he will, he will tell me if, it, if, it's, if I say something wrong on the tech. So, uh, COVID happened. I was just, it was February. I was ready to move it out of my house. I'd been there for four years. Uh, and this just threw a wrench in everything, as we all know. So, I ended up. Long story short, I decided I would just learn more about creating experiences. Uh, I was reading like a book a week. I started this blog. Uh, I invented a title for myself called IRL Experience Designer. Uh, <laughs> by some miracle, IRLXD.com was available. So uh, I've got, I blog twice a week. I've got about 250,000 words on it now. Uh, Many of them are worth reading, some of them are not. Uh, this is again in the, in the house. So in my, this is, <laughs> speaking of yeah, people taking it, doing it DIY, this is my living room, which became the waiting room. Uh, this is sort of towards the end of when COVID was getting to where people could safely go out again. Uh, some pictures of, so yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't want people to see my living room, so I had to make this tunnel. So this is the this is the room. I've got some LEDs going around the top, which are just a standalone remote kind of thing. There's the front door. So imagine you've booked this thing to, for this immersive experience. You go to the neighborhood, and this is this guy's house, and you walk into that. There's the tunnel going down to the Eureka room. Kind of looks like murder volcano. <laughs> Still, even, even though the walls are white, um, yeah, so, yeah. This is the last group in my house. I was more excited than them to get it out of my house. Uh, this is the control room before, and this is my living room kind of back in order, sort of. <laughs> so I found a building in May on Cesar Chavez, which is obviously this building, uh, and it's it was really hard to find a place, uh, obviously, it's just in general in Austin, but uh, I had special requirements where I had to have at least nine foot ceilings because of the height of it. And sound is a big issue because I, I turn the music up, it's very loud, people are screaming. Um, it's in a good way. Uh, <laughs> um, and so I, I've really, I, found, I got lucky with this, this property. I have, a, I have a 10 month lease on it through March to kind of test this idea out. Uh, so I've really been hustling that. Uh, this is 
uh, picture of building it out. It used to be two panels deep. Now it's three panels deep. There's my man Grant. This guy is amazing. He helped me build a whole bunch of stuff. He's what just. What does uh, panels deep mean? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for stopping me. There, we had them in a four by eight panel of LEDs. So in the original version, I had one panel and another panel, so it was eight feet wide. And then in this version, you can kind of see it's like there's like one panel here and then two and then like three goes there, so it's 12 feet. Thank, thank you for asking. I, I have all this in my head and I... Just out of curiosity, what prompted you to expand it? Did you have more space, so why not? Or? It, no, it just didn't feel quite right with four. People were standing close to the screen mm -hmm. and um, okay. uh, it, it, I feel like this just totally, it just feels like the right depth now. It's more immersive, like people were yeah. kind of on the edge and stuff. Um, just making it better. Yeah. So, that went on a bit. Um, so this is the waiting room now. It's, it's way, way more cool. And, and the, the ceilings of this place were 11 feet, so it was like much better. Uh, um, right now I'm running it off this MacBook here for the waiting room. <laughs> this is the waiting room with the, um, so this is just the TV that runs from the MacBook right now. These lights are Hue lights. I'm in the middle of getting hooked up to uh, touch designer, so the whole thing would run on touch designer. I can synchronize the sound in this room with the sound in in the LED room, uh, and make like a much more seamless and integrated experience. Um, so, touch designer can. I mean, there's some stuff on GitHub that you can that people have written to to integrate with you. It's not in. It's not baked in touch designer, but loads of stuff are baked into touch designer. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and just jump over there for a second and just show you that. I mean, I really, like this thing, can, it's got, it can do, you know, m tons of like VR headsets, like Oculus, it can do like any sensor you can think of, it's got like body motion sensing technology, like it can just, it can just do any kind of sensor or, or data manipulation you could think of. And Almost any standard data stream protocol, it knows how to talk to it and control it. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. It's, it's a little weird to get used to it at first, but a lot of the, I believe, a lot of the, the big installations you see at like shows and concerts that have like all this stuff going on and, and the projection mapping, it, it's, I think it's usually touch designer. because This is kind of become the industry standard for controlling I, this sort of thing. I can't, I can't say that for sure, but it certainly seems that way. Um, is it only available on Macs, or is it cross-platform? It's, it's, it's better on a PC. They do have it on a Mac. Um, it seems to work okay on a Mac, but they're really, it was born on for a PC, audience, so it's still on. I have still, to ask if there's a Linux port out there for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so, but yeah, don't quote me on that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it comparable to something like QLab for lighting? I, I think it, like, it kind of does that same sort of stuff. I don't know too much about QLab, but... Um, I've used QLab a little bit in design. I mean, I know QLab, you know, it's, it's for theatrical cues, so I know it handles mm -hmm. light, sound, and projection Okay, cues. yeah. A lot of VJs use touch design because a lot of this can be done on the fly. I, I was going to say that, like, my experience with QLab, it, it's like, yes, you can control lights, but it's going to be, like, controlling at most, like, 15 fixed lights. It's not for, like, controlling a 10,000 LED wall with a channel yeah, for this one. This thing does like massive, massive projects, yeah. And they usually have like multiple PCs running that kind of coordinate in some way that's and Danny well Danny QLab experts watching. Sorry if I'm wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they just got some photos of people at a gift shop. Um, so just, a, so that's basically the, the Eureka room. So um, didn't give out too many spoilers. Let me just stop and see if, anything was terribly confusing, you have questions about that. Okay. I, I, I have a question, but you may not be able to answer it because uh -huh. you don't want to spoil things. So what... It, <laughs> what happened? What, what, what is it? Yeah, like, do you... Do you <laughs> I, okay. So, yeah. all right, all right. So let I me, mean, I kind of got a general okay. idea. So let me, let me... So what are the, let me talk about... That, that's a good segue. So 
there's a lot of this immersive stuff now. You may know Meow Wolf. Uh, you probably, uh, there's another Meow Wolf photo. Uh, you may be familiar with the Museum of Ice Cream and these Instagram houses where people go and take photos. Um, God, that's a really small photo. I don't know why that shows. <laughs> that's the Van Gogh. This is the Van Gogh thing. There are, if, oh, cool. if you're not familiar with Van Gogh things, uh, there's, they're basically you show up and there's a bunch of projections of Van Gogh on the walls and some of them are animated. And there's like, literally, I think like 10 or more companies doing this. Like they're all just doing the same thing. No, like they've branched there's, out. There's multiple companies just doing the Van Gogh it's like, thing to the point that the original one in Paris, Atelier Louvier, puts out all this advertisement saying, we're the real one. They're all cheap <laughs> knockoffs. Yeah, it's, and they're like 60 bucks. I feel like a lot of them are money grab. I mean, obviously, I mean, making the money because they keep which copying. The scene is incredible. The one in so, Paris is mind blowing. Yeah, but yeah. The the other ones from people who've been to them, yeah, they don't sound nearly as impressive. But I yeah. haven't been to the other ones. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of this going on. The Eureka Room, by by contrast, is kind of instead of you go and like Meow Wolf is awesome, and like a lot of these things are really awesome. I don't. Want, I'm not saying that about what I'm saying about the Van Gogh thing about all of them. Um, but a lot of them are, you go and you, you look at things or you explore. What the Eureka Room is, or how it is different, is I want the people to interact with each other. Uh, so a lot of the, the, the sort of games, there's a lot of absurdity, there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of playfulness. Uh, and I want it to be for adults, like not for kids. I've, I've had kids in there and, and they love it, but I feel like when there's a kid in there, it, Everyone kind of focuses on the kid, and it's it's a lot more interesting when you just have adults in here, and you're like, okay, here's some unstructured play, act stupid. Here's it's 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 just a different thing. And people, I've had if you look online, there's some really good reviews. People, some people really really love this, um, and uh, that's more of the focus here than than the, the come and look at this stuff. So some people come and they're, they're disappointed by the visuals because it's. To me, that's not what it's about. They're there to Like, to, if to, they're to, expecting sort of, Meow Wolf braided visuals, they might not get what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I need 200,000. I need 200,000 <laughs> LEDs. Yeah. Uh, in fact, things happen so quickly there, but you can't. Frankly, the low res nature of it is part of what I find so charming about it. It's, it's like a oh, yeah. it's, it's like chip tune escape room. <laughs> yeah. It's. Yeah, the, there's, a lot of the aesthetic is kind of uh, homemade on purpose and because out of necessity, but it's kind of stuck to where I, I'm just going to keep that. Um, so along lines of like having people interact, especially strangers, it's like I, I have a huge pile of feedback from people and like I think it's, it's just really something people uh, a lot of people really appreciate. Um, some people say it's like their favorite thing, that they got to mess around with strangers or whatever. Uh, I had a couple quotes here that I've seen recently. Um, this is in the New York Times. In 1990, only 3% of Americans said they had no close friends. In 2021, nearly 12% said the same. The United States is in the grips of a loneliness crisis that predates the COVID pandemic. Uh, in 2018, a study by the Kaiser Family Foundation said one in five Americans said they always or often felt lonely or socially isolated. I think that plus the pandemic, plus a lot of screen addiction, uh, work from home, uh, everything from home really, uh, is really uh, caused a greater desire for people to go out and have spaces where they can interact with other people with, uh, and meet other people. Uh, and so that, that's a lot of the driving force, I think a lot of the appeal of this to people, other than the surprises and, and the, the weird fun. Uh, I've also seen that like, studies have shown that people consistently underestimate how much they will enjoy interacting with a stranger. And I see that here all the time. Like people, they get into the waiting room like, I don't know, but be in this room with these people we don't know. Uh, so uh, that's, I'm, I'm right about at the 30 minute mark, so I don't want to go much longer, uh, but I could go forever. So I, I just want to say that there's, there's that aspect, of, and I feel like a lot of this technology would really help connect people. There's 
a lot of focus, I think, on, on screen-based stuff and VR-based stuff, but I think there's a lot of opportunity for just using some of this technology. And this, what I'm doing here is just scraping the surface, I feel like, well, to help I was connect people. Be snarky, your metaverse actually works. Hey, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so. I, I guess I'll leave it at that and see if there's any questions. That's probably uh, does, does the room have questions for Mike? Yes. Also, I'm going to uh, pop out quick. Does anybody besides myself need a parking voucher? I'll go get them from the desk if you do. Okay. 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 You, all right. I'll, I'll go get two of them for okay. us. All right. That's good. And Nick, are you able to see if there's any questions online? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, you have sure. All right, you have the power. If there's any What's online. that? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Not there so, Mike, you've been to the Eureka Room. Yes. Uh, what would you like people to know that I have not shared? Oh, uh, well, I mean, since you already got the turkey volcano slide. <laughs> okay, sorry. Tell <laughs> them about turkey volcano a little bit. I mean, uh, yeah. it's just a, a, the interactive element, I think, is uh, mm -hmm. the... Go ahead. Yes. yes. I came in a little bit late. I kind of get the idea of the meow wolf, I uh -huh. escape rooms. I like the idea of like an interactive kind of like something not, something kind of different, you know? Uh, it's something you bring like the friends to, a date, a first date to, a second date, uh, um, <laughs> your family. Well, like, I, and I feel like escape room is a little misleading because I wouldn't go to an escape room necessarily, but this is a completely different experience. It's, it's more of an immersive, collaborative okay. experience. Yeah. yeah. But it's still pertaining to my original question that I asked him. It is interactive in the sense that it's not its not like a theater. You just walk in and watch something. It's no, and each of the panels, I feel like, is, a bit, is like, uh, well, I don't know. Again, it's hard yeah. to give things yeah. away. Yeah, <laughs> to, to answer your question directly, uh, I have had people come on first dates. It does seem to be a, it's maybe not a first date thing because it is kind of mm -hmm. weird. Like, depends on who the people are. Um, families you know. families yeah, do come. Fast filter. I was going to say, that's how you weed them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, would, if, you, if you feel like this is for you and you wanted to see if they're like, if they're there for you, then just bring, <laughs> you can bring them. Um, yeah, one guy said he invited somebody on a first date and she's like, eh, how about the fourth date or something? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, get, I get like birthday parties. I get, uh, I will say one thing. I've noted, make sure your friends are into it because it's not f for everybody. Um, you know, there's, there's sometimes like a group of people who like one of them's really into it and others are more, uh, I wouldn't say it's for extroverts, but I'd say it's like for people who are willing to be playful or want to be playful in just like a pretty harmless way. Somebody who's very far on the introvert side might not find this super fun. Yeah, it could be like the room is, you know, you've seen it, it's, it's not like uh, a lot of space. I mean, there's, it's enough space, but. Uh, and right now, I'll do eight, four to ten people in there. Yeah. And so. I have a question from online of how does one make a reservation for the room and how much does it cost? Oh, is, is that uh, my social media person? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, you can make a reservation at eurekaroom.com and it costs, currently costs $25 and I don't have any fees on that other than the government taxes. And uh, I would advise joining a group that's, if you don't have a group of eight I would, and you can it's best, the bigger the group, the better. So if you have two and you see that there's already some people who have booked four of the, spot, four of the eight spots, I would uh, book with them. I know it sounds weird. Most things you don't want to like, you kind of want it to yourself. People contact me all the time and say, I want it to myself. How do you do that? It's, it's better with other people. Mike, would you agree? Yeah. My, my wife just booked the set, her second. Uh, she's bringing them. Oh, office. she's the one. To book. Oh, yeah. awesome. Oh, office. thanks. So, Beautiful. Yeah. I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> So it's open Thursday through Sunday and by appointment. So. Um, yeah, 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 I mean, I, 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 I made enough murder jokes. I wasn't going to mention that. But, yeah. I guess like a question I have for you is, you know, obviously, you know, it, I could easily see this, you know, places like this, you know, often become places that like companies do corporate team building sort of things. It's yeah. To the point where a lot of people dread escape rooms precisely because of that. Yeah, like, what right. is... What is your pitch of why this is not a terrible, awkward experience with your coworkers if your company is dragging you to this? <laughs> um, well, it's not cliche, that's for sure. Uh, it's um, not, certainly. Um, <laughs> that's a good start. Yes. It's, it, I think, you know, what, again, it depends on the company. I'm not going to say it's for every company. I'll say it's for, you know, if you have a team that is a fun team or feel, you know, seems like, 
fun people and they, they seem like they're being something like this, like surprises, I would, in experiences, I would say it would be totally great for them because it's totally different. Than but the team who is all remote and they don't ever socialize and don't maybe want to socialize, <laughs> maybe not. I've had some of them, they like it okay, you know, they, but they don't know each other. Like, it's a work function, so I think that changes the, the, the context, right? It, so, yeah. I guess I have one more question for all of us yep. from the room. Like, you know, you clearly devoted a substantial amount of your life to this. Literally <laughs> in a room in your house, your yes, time, yeah. your money, yeah, I had... many false starts. Like, you know, and I, I hear the philosophy behind it, but like what for you personally made you want to build this thing and put it in the world and stick with it despite how much work and setbacks there Carve out half your wall. Yeah, I carve out I had fifteen hundred people come through my house. Um oh, wow which my toilet has never been so clean. I, it's, I, I'm really, I, uh, they, you know, I don't know. I honestly just feel like it was just something that had to be done. I mean, it sounds cheesy or something, but like, it was just like, I just felt compelled to do it. I don't even feel like it's necessarily my calling or anything. It's like, well, this kind of needs done. So that's what's happening. And that sounds insane. I don't know. <laughs> so, I love it. Um, kind of get it though. I love it. So, yeah. So. Mike, do you? Yeah, so I think you said this, uh, you got this place till March. I have it till March, so please tell your friends. Yes. And then is there another? I don't know. There's, like, the property, like much in Austin, is in flux. They don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, but for you? For me, room. for me, yeah. I mean, I would like to maybe stay there a little bit longer than that. I need to see if it will be successful. I need, I need to find some uh, probably funding if I really want to get it to a more like you know, three to five room kind of situation. Uh, I'm working on, you know, getting up the numbers. I get a lot of great reviews, but trying to get the sales number and revenue up is... is so that would be the next phase would be to build up more rooms versus a bigger room? Like it would be I would like a, one room that is bigger, and then I would like to move to, uh, instead of the LEDs, I want to move to uh, projections so I can get a higher resolution. There's a lot more stuff I could do with high resolution, and I could always dumb it down to match the lower resolution. Yeah, and I have a question about that too. But Kevin, but so. Well, and also, I'm, I'm curious, like, so do you, uh, are you committed to that you design all the content of the experiences, or are you starting to farm that out to experience um, creators? Right now, it's it's kind of me, because I feel like I, I well, your voice climbed the mountain. I climbed the mountain, and I, just so I could get finally got the canvas up, and it's like, okay, for me, I'm going to work on the canvas myself for, for a while, and then as... You know, as demand grows, yeah. But uh, and, and as the tone gets more settled, the tone's pretty settled. You get, you kind of get what the tone is, and how, but um, for now, it's yeah. The only other thing I got on that is, well, you know, my my advice about finding funding is you just need to find an eccentric tech millionaire who's convinced <laughs> this is the key to productivity or enlightenment. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's both. Tag Elon on Twitter. <laughs> okay. Well, I, so uh, yeah, we'll see. I uh, I I'll be beginning that more in earnest after the uh, next couple of weeks. I just hired my first employee, so I can finally get some, uh, I know, yeah, so I can get some, uh, uh, <laughs> I know, I've, I was, these 12 to 15 hour days are killing me, so. Yeah, so I can get to get out of the operations and do more of the, the future work that he's done. I employee you just hired, if I am correct. Chelsea, you know? Oh, oh somebody else, never mind. Okay, <laughs> okay, go oh, yeah. hey. Um Anything else? Yeah, any other questions, especially from somebody who's not I'll be around if y'all want to have like, other questions you can ask afterward while you're I here. I just had a, uh, if nobody else has one right now, I just had a question about, uh, have you ever heard of the volume? Uh, it is the uh, space that they shot most of the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, the, 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 sort of the dome. where the computers can switch all the, 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 the yes. The Unity engine. Yeah. yeah. I know, it's okay. insane. Yeah. I think they're building something like that here, someone's That's telling me. Yeah. No, like, yeah. none, none of that shit is real location shoots. Like, like everything is projected. It's not CGI either. It's if that's projection, projection or LED, it's a long place for sets. I think it's not CGI. I can't remember how it works. I remember watching something on Yeah, it's not CGI. 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 It's not C
want this to be like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't want this to become an arms race. Like I, I love technology where I was like, I want the highest res thing. I want all that, because that's just not a, a game I want to play. Um, I would rather be like, okay, I'm gonna make the best experiences. And even if the, the drawings are like they are as you've seen, and it just like, I'd love to keep the homemade feel and focus on like the, what people are actually feeling than like what their resolution, what they're seeing or, or something like that. I, I guess I'm hearing a very similar philosophy to people who make I wouldn't turn mo it down. modern <laughs> games where like they have very retro graphics and the focus is on the most engaging gameplay possible, yeah. not the realist yeah. graphics. I mean, you can have fun with like anything, right? You just have to like set the experience up right and get the, the, right, the people who We'll, our match for that well, experience. I mean, if you're talking about VR experiences, already in town we have Originator Studios, so it's like, you know, that, somebody else has already claimed that niche, but nobody's yeah. doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, and there's something about the, the box that, I mean, everybody has a, a space. It feels like everybody has a little, especially if there's six to eight people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, versus, you know. It's a diff yeah, it's a different, like, uh, the, the zone would be a kind things, of whole different, yeah. Yeah, with the, like the, all the reading I've done, like things really change, you know, Two people in a room, four people in a room, eight people in a room, 12 people in a room. It's like a different vibe. You just, it's just, you have to, for me, I've just had to play with it. I'm like, okay, what feels right? What feels, what, what and then when you get a big room, like that, that changes the intimacy that you have. Like you're not going to uh, have probably the same sort of connection, not feel like everyone in the room had the same energy. Have, have you developed an equation relating to the size and number of people <laughs> to optimal connection? Yeah. Well, there, I mean, there, there's like Priya Parker, if you know her, she's the art of the gathering. She has some numbers and she kind of guesses. Uh, oh, and not guesses, but like her and her, her experience, like she, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'll build her a bigger room and then I'll let you know. All right. Mm -hmm. I I, I don't want to keep yapping if, if I feel like oh, we're well, we have to so okay. it's just until the audience gets better. <laughs> just until people get a book. My last one is just about feedback. Like, how do you uh, incorporate, you know? I, you that's a great question. So, I mean, I, I didn't, I kind of kept this to more the technical aspect, but like, I could talk a lot about how things get designed, I, like, um, and all the, the terrible ways I've tried and what I've learned. Uh, I, I do a lot of like early prototyping, you know, design, design build test is constantly do, run that cycle and uh, I uh, take the feedback as soon as I can. Like Turkey Volcano, like we didn't even go in the room when I first started. I, I didn't even know what it was. Like I got a bunch of props, let's, what can we come up with? Uh, and then that, and so, and when people write stuff down in the forums, I have survey forums and they leave. I totally incorporate that. Like I, I will, I, I I've listened to people in these rooms so many times. Like I can hear what they're not laughing. You know, like, there's a dead spot. I can, you know, I can. I know when they're confused, and I'm just like change. I have like endless notes on my phone of like just me sitting there listening. Okay, that I gotta change that. I need a beat there. I need a beat there. They're not. They're not. They're talking over each other. Whatever. Yeah. Do you stay up like afterwards and change the whole? <laughs> I, no, I just collect a huge list of things and like <laughs> sit down every now and then and just make all those changes. Um, yeah, House of Psych. That's one of the programs. I was like, I'm well into 500 hours of editing that. Like I just constantly. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we still say it right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. And is it a one size? I mean, is it a one program, or can you choose whole programs in the game? Yeah. The, um, right now, it's a set of four programs. The idea, originally and maybe in the future, is that people could just show up to a building and select from the screen, swipe your credit card, and go in, and it's like totally this weird thing that's there's no other humans involved. I tried that in my house, it really creeped people out. So, <laughs> I, 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 uh, a, a weird building that will just take your money? Yeah. That sounds like the so beginning of like, the Twilight Zone, yeah. 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 it ends badly. Yeah, so. oh, that's why you're robots, don't worry about it. One of the, the Halloween Black Mirror experience. Uh, <laughs> so there are four programs that you that. experience all four. You go, it, you get all four in one hour. So if oh. you just show up, they're all just packaged together, kind of seamed together. And it's kind of worked good as a package, so I may just go that route, too, instead of the individual. Uh, and hopefully there will be more soon. A Halloween one, not the Black Mirror one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Black Mirror. Ho hopefully soon, hopefully next year, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I need my Black Mirror face. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait for the chip to shorten the brain out. <laughs> so. 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we don't have any other questions. I have a final one that maybe we could end on. Um, sure. Right. So, um, and I'm going to make this two parts so we don't end on a downer note. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm sure, as you said, you've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of people. What is the most negative, angry feedback you've gotten? <laughs> and then what is the most positive Milton Jr. Oh, feedback you Man, what a way to re-traumatize me. <laughs> um, so I'm just I, curious. I That's skip, a unique thing. I'm I skipped this whole part know. where this went through this like this uh, phase where I was trying to combine mindfulness and positive psychology with, with fun, weird stuff. And I called it mindful attainment. And it was just a total disaster. Like people did not get it at all. They um, they were expecting something else. Like I basically, they went in the room and instructed them to do some stuff. And one guy went in there and came out. And it was just, it was terrible. I, and he's just like, I, I said, I can't remember what I asked him, but he just, he just looked at me and says, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And I was like, oh, OK, well. That's like, yeah. So I mean. I say that joking. Yeah, I mean, maybe I said it a little harsher than he did, but he was just like, he was shook. I felt bad because he was obviously mis, you know. He, he I, was game to have I gave fun him a bad experience. What he was expecting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that happens. Doesn't happen. That really, that was, those programs quickly died. But unfortunately, there are some people who got uh, kind of sacrificed in the wrong way, <laughs> <laughs> metaphorically. Um, so the best feedback, I mean. I, I had these two women, three women from Brazil, and this, this, this other uh, couple of women that were with them they didn't know, and uh, they were probably the, in the 60s. Two of the Brazilian women didn't even speak English, um, and like there's definitely English instructions and stuff, but they went in there and it was just like, oh my god, it was just like screaming, and they were just having like the best time ever. Uh, you can see there's bowls. I gave, gave them a smaller bowl for some reason. I went in there and I said, but, um, how did, how'd the smaller bowl work? Because I'm always getting feedback. And the woman was like, oh, we just used it as a hat. Which is, you've been there, it's not, it's not meant to be a hat. And then the one woman translated for the other, she said, like, this is the best thing that she's done when she's been in America. And I was like, wow, that nice. is like, that is like, mm -hmm. so I was like, yeah, she's been here for a couple months. To America. So I was like, that's, that's I mean, um, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. I'm not promising either one of those experiences for anyone. <laughs> Any, Too late, um, the bar's been raised. All right. Any uh, final stuff? Turkey thank you, Kevin and EFF, for having me. I, did, well, I don't know if I said that to you with. Thank you all for project that I've never seen anything else like. Yes. <laughs> it's a little more comedy. Yeah. 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 On the highway? Yeah. 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 No, I've seen the billboards. I've not been, yes. Oh, uh, what's all right. Yeah, I, I, I've right. driven through Arizona, but I've not seen that. I'll have to keep in mind. Thanks, everybody, for watching. It was Thank great you. to see a lot of friends on the stream. Um, and for those of you here in person, um, if you want to uh, join anybody for a drink in the lobby, feel welcome. Otherwise, uh, we hope we'll see you next month. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.